Hello and welcome to this edition of Quality of Life and I'm your host Dave Augustine. This is our second episode in the series of four working with Tony Green who is a well-known psychic, median, channeler, hypnotist, healer and author. Yes. So welcome Tony. Thank you Dave, it's an honor to be here. Nice. Um, again like I said this episode is dealing with the second one, our previous episode was on hypnosis. This one is on psychic reading or just reading, which there's many different avenues or whatever of that, where they usually basically use, I believe you said at one time, psychic is the summary of all the Correct. gifts or whichever. Correct. So um, some people use the term psychic, um, which means to be able to, some people think it means to be able to read your mind. Um, most people wouldn't want to read other people's minds. There's not as much going on up there as you think it would would be. I don't read minds. What I do is I uh, can answer questions about your future, your past, or your present. Mm -hmm. Medium is um, someone who can communicate with those on the other side. And then a channel is someone who can uh, get, allow information to come through them for the whole. Okay. Okay. And just one thing I wanted to illustrate or mention in this episode is we are by no means challenging or trying to broadcast any religious beliefs or anything like that. This is just the pure part of quality of life as far as healing. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I just wanted to let our viewers know that so we don't, you know, yeah. disturb anybody, so to speak, because that's not what this one is about. Absolutely so, not. Uh, with the whole, you know, I'm just going to use psychic because it makes it easier to go through. Do you do them, or I guess, when did you know what when you were psychic and have all these abilities? Okay, so I have had the abilities for as long as I can remember. Now, I had no idea what I was doing. Um, I had no idea I was psychic or channeling. Mm -hmm until much later in life when somebody else was explaining what they were doing and I said I do that all the time and I didn't realize it was a big deal because well mm -hmm. when we have a gift that we've never put in a closet or push, pushed down or inside of us or forgotten about it's just a part of how you operate every single day so um, about seven years ago, eight years ago, I finally decided to do it as a profession because everybody who was coming to me for hypnosis, I would just start giving them messages mm -hmm. and they would come back just for the messages. Okay. Um, do you continue to develop your skills? Is it something you can build upon, build upon to just make them sharper, hone them in or, you know, grow your skills? Yeah. So first, I just want to say everybody, I believe everybody's born with intuition. And that's a psychic and intuition are almost the same exact mm -hmm. thing. Everybody's born with this innate inner coach or intuition that guides them, tells them, don't do this, do this. Um, it's, it's our choice to listen to that coach or not, to listen to that uh, intuition or not or psychic ability or not if you listen to it it gets stronger and stronger if you don't if you keep ignoring it it just like everything else will go away for me the more I'm in that moment of energy um, the stronger it gets but I've again I've always used it now for somebody else if they decided they wanted to start using their gifts more they could sit in silence and just focus in on certain subjects or areas mm -hmm. that they wanted answers to and they would start getting them. Okay. Is there a place where people could go to help develop their skills and are there certifications, you know, like if you're in the medical field or whatever, you can get certifications on certain things? There are a number of people that teach, um, that help people open up their psychic abilities. I have a program that I offer with hypnosis to open up your psychic abilities. Um, there are a lot of places, and the, the UK is amazing. This is as normal in the UK as being an IT guy. Uh, they have 
hundreds of psychic agents and psychics. Mm -hmm. and, and so in the UK, they have some really cool classes that they teach in castles, from what I've heard. That would be a lot of fun, but I don't need the classes. So anyway, um, <laughs> if you want the classes, you could go there and, and do that. Um, but yes, there are a number of different people and a number of different places where you can go and open up your intuition, psychic, medium, spiritual side of yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we had recently taped the reading of myself, yes. or where you read me, mm -hmm. or, uh, as far as that goes. When you're reading somebody, do you have to be in close proximity? Because I also know you have your show, Messages from Above, which is yes. on Air, Air One Radio, I believe. Ask One Radio. Ask One, excuse me. Ask One Radio. So can you use your gifts over a distance or does it have to be close? Does it work on Wi-Fi? I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, how does yeah, it's it? Kind of, for me, it kind of is Wi-Fi. Um, some people need to touch you and, and mm -hmm. have a piece of the, I, I personally don't need that. Um, I do have the radio show that I do every Wednesday at 9.30 p.m. And people call in from Australia, from, other mm -hmm. from all around the U.S. and other countries and they'll ask me questions and um, once I can understand their dialect or their accent I can answer any questions that they have whether it be connecting with someone from the other side or about their life path um, I also during phone readings a lot of people mm -hmm. from other states uh, and from Canada call me for phone readings, it's really easy for me to get those messages for them and be able to give them the information that they need to, to follow what they're supposed to be doing here. Okay. So in the reading that we did, or that you did on me, mm -hmm. coming back to that, um, was it basic, pretty much a typical reading that yeah. you get with as far as Ab how it goes? Absolutely. People want two things. They want to know, number one, where their life is going, is everything going to be okay? And number two, their loved ones on the other side, are they okay? And, and to just know to, to still have that little bit of a connection with them. So that's, those are the two mm -hmm. things that I do the most during readings. Yes. Okay. Do readings only work with people or can it work with animals? You know, because a lot of times animals are loved ones, you know, almost part of the family as well. Yeah, I have a lot of people contact me about their pets. My pets, you know, this, that, or it's not feeling well, this is going on, that's going on, and I can tap into that and try to get whatever information I need for their pet. Um, most of the time it's for the person, but every once in a while for the pet. But I can connect with um, pets on the other side as well as pets here on okay. this side. Okay. Do you do that a lot with pets? I do. Really? I do, yeah. You wouldn't believe... Um, the, the number of people that come through and want to know that their pets are okay the same way we want to know mm -hmm. our loved ones are okay because they're like our children, they're our babies, right. right? Right. I know in the session we were talking about pets that I asked you about. The one was Henry. He was actually a beagle and pug mix. Okay. And he had a lot of miles on him. And I don't... He, I don't think he was really taken care of as well. So we thought, well, we adopted him. And he was a sweetheart, you know, at first, but it was like all of a sudden everything just came out. He lost his eyesight, his hearing, everything all in one weekend. And in about four days' time, he maybe had three or four hours of sleep. That was it because he would just be exhausted, you know. So it makes sense on what you had said about which was where he said thank you you know for the six months of you know care and love that we did give yeah. him so and you know what actually right now i'm picking up that um i keep hearing neurological neurological so whatever else they found there was a there were a lot of neurological issues with henry also mm -hmm. just a ton of neurological and they missed they missed a lot in the beginning they missed all this you know it's very difficult for vets because with a child, we can say, this is what's going on with my sure. child. We take a dog into a vet, and they really can't, other than the looking at them, feeling them, listening to them, they're guessing just as right. much as we are. But with Henry, from the get-go, they missed a lot of neurological stuff. And the previous owners 
just didn't have the coping mechanisms, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. to suffer. Well, actually, he was taken back to the Humane Society a couple times. Okay. Where the people who had him just didn't take care of him or didn't want him for whatever the purpose. So. Yeah. So previous owners. Yeah. It's it's really unfortunate, but he did have the spirit of a lion. I'll tell you that. Mm -hmm. He came in a fighter and remained a fighter yep, through the whole did. time. Yep, he did. So uh, how have you helped people with your gifts? Okay, so that's a, that's a great question. Thank you. Um, I'll give you a couple of different examples. Sometimes a loved one passes on and somebody will come in and say, are they still angry with me? And this person has been carrying this huge weight of feeling like the person who has passed is still carrying their human emotions. They don't. As soon as they leave their flesh, the human emotions go with it. And they're in this place of pure love. And they can look at the life path and see how and why everything worked the way it did. And I'm able to help them understand that this person not only is no longer angry with them, but understands why everything happened the way it did. Mm -hmm. And um, that's one way. Another way I can help people with my gifts is people, you know, we really, we want to know we're doing the right thing. Everybody knows they have a purpose, a calling, something they're supposed to be doing, and they don't always know if they should do this or that. Should I take this job or that job? Which job is going to turn out better for me? They don't know if they should um, be with... Uh, this partner or that partner, or if they should leave this partner for that partner. Right. Um, and I can help them. I don't make decisions for people. It's not, I'm not the boss of anybody. Right. I can tell them what can happen in either direction or what the best thing for them is. They still have the power to walk out and make their own choices, do their own thing. Um, so I'm, I kind of give them the tools they need to make the best possible decisions for their life. Okay. And you, I think you kind of touched on it before. You don't make decisions for people. So this is not like mind reading or fortune telling, so to speak. No. This is something totally different. Right. There are certain occasions where someone will come in and I have to give them a very strong warning because of what's already going to happen. Mm -hmm. I had one client come in and I said, um, you know, your, your work contract is going to end and you need to move out of the place you're in. Uh, you need to get out from behind the eight ball on this. You need to get out, and I kept repeating that statement, you need to get out from behind the eight ball on this. And he kind of blew me off, thinking, sure. Right. Well, he called me two days later, he said, my contract with work is ending, and my contract where I'm living is ending. What do I need to do? Exactly. <laughs> like, well, okay, now you want to listen. Yeah. Here we go. This yeah. is what you, and I said, you're going to get another contract. It's going to be piecework, and you're going to be doing this, 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 and that. And the, as far as uh, the place, he, he told me three options he had looked at. And I said, this place will be best for this. This place will be best for that. But I, I think the first place that you mentioned is the absolute mm -hmm. going to be the best place. Now, on the other side of that, I had a client called me and she said, we want to take this place. I said, don't take it. I said, you're going to regret it. It's something you could have never seen coming. Uh, you, it, this place seems amazing and the place itself is amazing, but do not take this place. Wait, something better will come along. Well, three months later, calls me and says, you were absolutely right. I should not have taken this place. The person living above me is extremely unstable and has um, done some really horrific things. Mm -hmm. And then um, an another case like that where uh, these, uh, this couple, I told them, this isn't the right place, wait, the right place will be there in a, mo a month. And they still took the place and they called me and said, you were right, I love hearing I was right, but I'm always <laughs> sorry when it's not beneficial to the sure. person. Um, they said, they're totally remodeling the other unit, so all we hear is people working all day long and all night long. I'm like, I'm really sorry. I said, you need to get out of this place. They're not going to stop, and as soon as they're done with that one, they're going to ask you to leave regardless sure. so they can remodel your unit too. Sure. 
So it's about having the right tools to make that choice and, and not feeling rushed to knowing, you know, the right thing is coming in. They, meaning the angels, mm -hmm. are always working for us, always working with us and for us to put us in the best possible position we can be in. We, myself included, don't always have the patience to wait for that timing to come in. So that's well, the, it's yes. It's like a kid at Christmas. You see all the presents under the tree, yes. but you want to open them now instead yes. of waiting for that two more days, and it gets worse the closer it gets. Exactly, exactly, absolutely. So with the gifts, is there a scope, the size of the scope that you're limited to? Is it just people, or could you, or do you have the ability to, you know, forecast or predict mm -hmm. events, you know, um, huge events or whichever? Absolutely. Absolutely. Usually when I'm talking about the world in general or bigger events, they just channel right through me and they start um, letting people know what's coming so they can prepare for it. Um, there's a lot going on in our world right now. And I'm so happy that they talk through me, the angels, mm -hmm. so that I don't put my personal perspective in it. And sometimes even when I'm ch channeling, I will be thinking in my head, oh my gosh, really? How is that going to happen? What is it like? like? So there's a dialogue going on in my head as they're speaking through me. And it always, you know... It always happens. The timing may be off a little bit, but it always happens. It happens like they say, and it's always in the best interest of everybody involved. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't mean you don't have power. I can tell you something. You can run out and you can decide you're not going to do that. You can decide, even though you said this is the best partner for me, I'm going to break up with them tonight because I'm in control of my life and I'm going to go find somebody else. I'm not the boss of you. Right. I'm just giving you what the information that you're asking for. You have the uh, free will choice to do whatever it is you choose. I would imagine you have to explain that to people before even starting out, otherwise. And during and after, after and on and on, yeah. because otherwise they'll say, well, she said that. Right, and the message, no matter what, the, the message that they bring for people is always right on. The timing might be off because the timing in uh, upstairs or on that plane is very different than the timing on our plane. Uh, they don't really have watches and clocks that they go by mm -hmm. the way we do. They don't have months, days, and years like we do. Um, and the reason we have time is so that we don't waste it. <laughs> That's the most basic way that I can put that. So one of the things that I would say is um, for people who come in, when I tell them things, I'll say, possibly in this time frame, it could be a little sooner, it could be a little sure. later, and it depends on that person. The higher our energy is, the happier we are, the faster things happen. And the more, if somebody gets really depressed or down, or anger is the worst, it slows things down completely as far as um, events coming in. Mm -hmm. We have to be in a certain energetic level or vibration for certain things to come in. We want that perfect partner, but if we are not in the right place for that partner, it won't work out. It's just that right. simple. It's that simple. When you read someone, um, do you use a combination of ever hypnosis and then to reading? Like say if somebody's just so jumbled or whatever that you hypnotize them to settle them down kind of and then uh. I, they, that's good. That's, there have been a couple times where somebody's come in and they've been like really nervous or really upset about something. And I use one of my healing modalities um, called the look of love where I just, I can gaze and um, this process starts that helps them to completely relax and mm -hmm. starts a healing process for whatever they're going through. Um, and they just calm. And a lot okay. of times when people are coming in asking for loved ones, um, especially if it's a mother who's lost a son, um, they do, they really are so, their heart is just so 
hurting mm-hmm. and they're so nervous about whether it's going to work or not. So as soon as that, that look of love starts and they can relax, um, they can get right in that space. There was one woman who came in who um, I, was issue, I was reading for her um, and she wanted to connect with her son so deeply and I, um, I did the look of love for her and she could see him in the room once she calmed down enough and she was, like, she was just floored and she's like, he's there, he's there. And here's me, yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. Like that's me yeah. every day, you know. She's like, no, 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 he's right there. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So she, it just validated everything so much for her and she left with so much peace about him being okay where he is. Mm-hmm. And that's really, that's really why I do this. There are so many people that are hurting and they need answers and they need to know their loved ones are okay. And I will spend every last minute helping them mm-hmm. that I can. Well, I know in our session when I was asking about a couple of high school friends and then um, the other, the other brother that was never made it or whatever. So it was like, wow, you know, that was very informative, quite interesting. And as well as relieving, you know, because everybody wonders, you know, like in the case of the high school friend, did they go, is it paid fully or however it was? So that was nice to know as well. Absolutely. So do you ever work with other psychics to kind of compare readings or what um. <laughs> to test them. you know I mean because if let's say one person let's say you read me and then if there'd be another psychic who would read me is it pretty much the results are the same or is there some different um, I've worked I did one uh, thing in the past where I worked with other psychics on a stage and we each got different information but it was all relevant mm-hmm. so it was I would get this piece, she would get this piece, he would get that piece, um, and together it, it made a great story. Um, but typically when someone comes to me, by their, they don't need to go, they don't ever, I don't ever hear of them going to anybody else. And I have had so many people tell me, I've been trying to connect with this person Mm -hmm. or that person and nobody's been able to do it. And I'll say, well, they're right here. This is what they're saying, da, 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 da. And then they're like, oh my gosh, thank you. I had one woman for 16 years, she was trying to connect with her brother and no one else could do it. Now, I don't take credit for this in any way, shape or form. It's not me. I'm simply a vessel. And if you allow that light in, that light will bring it to that person. They come for you, and hopefully the person facilitating has enough, um, is open enough to give you those messages. Okay. So. If you're in a room full of people, do you get like flashes then from everybody? Or I guess, how do you monitor, control, turn it Um, off, turn it on, or from becoming overwhelmed? Since, I think because I've had this since I was a child and it didn't, you know, I didn't, it, um, when I tap in, when I ask, or more importantly, when that person asks, it's right there for me. I have a really big privacy, uh, I don't know if I would call it a big privacy clause. I don't look around where Mm -hmm. I haven't been invited. (laughs) I don't, I don't want people to think that as I'm walking down the street, I'm you know, picking up all of their information. It's, uh, our, our beings are very private. If somebody comes to me and they want that information, I will give it to them. And I've had a number of especially women who want certain information, but they don't want me to know other information. And I only get what they want me to know. Okay. And if something comes up, like sometimes I'll say, is there another person involved in this situation, meaning a relationship, meaning mm-hmm. is there a third person in this relationship? And they'll, they'll sheepishly go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'll say, okay, it's okay. I have absolutely no judgment, 
none whatsoever. Um, I understand we're here learning, we're growing, we have contracts. Everything that's happening is happening with purpose to help us evolve. That's it. It's, it's just that simple. Man made right and wrong. God made us. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, and the, so they're, they're very, people are typically very comfortable with me and able to allow me to, to give them that information. But I don't go farther than their comfort zones. Nice. We have a few minutes before we wrap. So are there any final thoughts that you may want to, you know, provide us or any final thoughts on the reading you did on me? Yeah. You, you know, if you're thinking about getting a reading, make sure you're very comfortable with the person and you understand that that person works only with the light and um, n nothing else. I've had a couple people come to me that say they do other things and that's okay for them, but I would say most people just want to work with somebody who works with the light and only the light. And, uh, and definitely schedule the appointment, get the closure, have the understanding there's only one place to go, it's back home. Mm -hmm. we, we go back to where we came from, no two ways about it. Okay, so. very good. And your website, if somebody's looking for more information, is www.tonyg.info? Yep, T-O-N-I-G.info. Excellent. Well, Tony, I'd like to thank you for being on our show for this episode and look forward to the next one. No, thank you, Dave. So um, this concludes our episode of Quality of Life. Again, on behalf of Tony Green, I'm Dave Augustine. Thank you for watching.